For restaurants and small businesses in downtown Denver, these restrictions will be another blow in an already devastating year. A real sense of uneasiness now lingers over the Mile High City as we move into that red tier on the shutdown scale. It's still too early to tell what kind of long-term damage 2020 has inflicted on the heart of the city. And as Denver 7's Russell Haythorn shows us in this 360 report, the real question is, how long will it take to recover? It's been said behind every great restaurant is a great chef. Just silly work. Culinary mastermind Jennifer Jasinski has kept Rioja in Larimer Square at the top of Denver's dining scene for 16 years now. But even Rioja's success is in jeopardy. Nine exhausting months is probably about the right term. Every day brings a new struggle. We're trying to adapt and stay alive. The ongoing pandemic and instability downtown is slowly sucking the life out of some of Denver's finest small businesses. I'm one of those believers in the power of positive energy, but some days it is very tough. You know, the 25% restriction and now the 10 o'clock curfew. Downtown's seemingly endless economic tailspin is the subject of news story after news story and even a recent hour-long documentary called Denver in Decay. But is it really the end of an era or just a temporary COVID-induced ghost town? What is the future? We're going 360 with an urban planner and urban centers expert, the Downtown Denver Partnership, hotels, restaurants, real estate experts. And we start with Katie Jacina, who has lived downtown for a few years, but recently decided to move on, listing and selling her downtown loft. My husband ended up having to start to work from home as well. And the only closed off space we really had was like the closet in the bathroom. So they resorted to taking work calls in the closet. Katie says that was it. They needed something more spacious. We found this like 1968 split level. That split level garden has a bedroom and a bathroom and a wet bar and a whole little living room. It's just the right move. Katie's realtor, Lori Abbey, says it's a real shift in mindset. More and more young people fleeing downtown. I've sold more homes in Arvada, Lakewood, Golden than I have in any time in the past to kids from the age of 25 to 35. A downtown downturn. You're seeing condos sitting for longer than they ever have. You're seeing condo prices go down. Realtor Chad Nash says look around. Shops boarded up, restaurants closing, office workers nowhere to be found. On the practical level, you have the, the job front. People don't need to be at the core of downtown. Their work is not happening downtown anymore. Nash says while there is genuine fear about downtown, some of the safety issues are misguided and exaggerated. Leading up to election season, there was a lot of fear mongering around messaging of the urban core. You see the protests. And that plays in folks' minds. Urban planning expert Jamie Gillis says not only does downtown look unsafe, it feels unsafe. Boards over all the windows, and it just doesn't really give you a sense that this is a place you want to come hang out with your family. She says while other cities like Las Vegas, Nevada, and London, England are addressing the COVID-related shutdowns head-on, Denver is turning a blind eye. There is no plan. That lack of honesty and transparency and having a conversation with the community about the realities we're facing is happening elsewhere. And I can say that because I'm working elsewhere. Will these commercial buildings become residential? Will anybody want to live downtown? Abby says not at the moment. And the thought of a crowded bar and crowded streets and people getting shot downtown and all these things happening, it's absolutely shifting. There's a shift in tourism too. Those in the hospitality industry like Kevin Bird say hotels don't stand a chance until conventions return. Colorado Convention Center, downtown convention center. When you're not having those size groups, I mean, it really impacts. Maybe the people aren't putting on the conventions, don't feel comfortable of having a thousand people there. You know, is it worth it to have 300 people there? There is hope. I don't see this as being something that's going to signal the end of the era of the city. DU professor and urban centers expert Andrew Getz says the decline will sting for months to come. Certainly for this year and probably next year. He says there's no question the work from home phenomenon and need for space will be a boom for the burbs. But as the theater, professional sports and conventions return, so too will the people. Cities will eventually come back. That's what the ever optimistic downtown Denver partnership is banking on. We've got sort of gazebo kind of features here. We've got tents here, so it's it's kind of fun. They're hoping innovation in dining and shopping experiences will still attract you to downtown this holiday season. We certainly respect what the governor and the mayor are looking to try to achieve to keep us all safe. 
Um, at the same time, we've got to balance the economics of this and find ways to, to maintain a healthy dynamic space. They're even planning a different kind of parade of lights. This year, the parade will be static, will be in place, and the people will be walking by. With the promise of a vaccine on the horizon, Nash and others are betting big on an eventual return. It's hard to suggest that we are at the end of urban living. Chazinski is doubling down on her business, even installing a new air filtration system. It kills 99.4% of all germs and it circulates every 30 minutes. And for those not comfortable dining in at the moment. We have a beautiful Thanksgiving meal. Um, if you want to take it home to cook at home. In downtown. Stay healthy, stay safe, do the right thing. Russell Haythorn. And then we can all get through this faster. Denver 7. And we have heard from so many of you already about the new restrictions that are going into place, put into place by Governor Polis. Rick writes, don't blame the governor. If the citizens of Colorado were following the CDC guidelines with regards to masks and social distancing, we would not be in the situation we are in now. Ian is a restaurant owner. He writes on Facebook, this is hard to see happen again, but I also don't want more people to die from COVID. I'm sorry that everyone has to go through this, and I'm sorry these lose-lose decisions have to be made. So we'll be having these conversations all day long. If you'd like to share your view, just send us an email to 360 at the Denver channel.com.